Hello YouTube. Uh, today I'm going to share my experiences with the Odyssey X86 J4105 or otherwise known as uh, the Recomputer as a Plex Media Server. Uh, so I came, came across this board when I was looking for a low cost decent performant, performance Plex server. So I had two main requirements in mind. I at least wanted five um, simultaneous H.265 transcoded streams. Um, so I was looking for a board that enabled hardware transcoding by Plex. Um, after some googling I found out that you had to have an Intel processor to enable this. So I was looking for an Intel enabled board. And the second requirement was that it had to be energy efficient. I didn't want a big fat server eating away all my electricity since the server will be online almost all of the time. So uh, with these requirements in mind I thought it would be a good idea to go for some type of single board computers or SBC since they're fairly cheap to buy and often have a better efficiency than a full-fledged computer with separate RAM, CPU, motherboard etc. So I went looking for an Intel enabled SBC. This narrowed down the search a lot since most single board computers like the Raspberry Pi are ARM based and not um, uh, x86 based. Uh, after a long search for the most suitable single board computer I chose the Odyssey x86 J4105 or a Recomputer. It had quite nice specs for a $180 um, single board computer, it had 8GB of RAM, M.2 expandability and most important of all the Intel Celeron J4105 which is a fairly recent uh, developed CPU that could handle the job. So here we've got the Odyssey single board computer um, we see on the one side we've got dual Ethernet, DC jack and some USB ports on the other side we've got USB 3.1 and a USB-C port on the bottom we've got a big heatsink for the CPU um, and then for storage expandability we've got just one SATA port. This was uh, a problem since my Plex library is now stored, stored on two hard drives. And uh, I didn't want to buy a new hard drive, I wanted to use my old ones. So I went online and found this M.2 to SATA adapter on AliExpress. It was fairly cheap at $25 or something like that and it works perfectly fine. I didn't notice any slow read or write speeds when using this adapter. Included in the box is this 12 volt 2 amp power supply. This powers everything on the board including the hard drives. The board also comes with a SATA HDD to SATA plus power cable and I'll be using this to connect one hard drive to the board. To measure the power usage during the stress tests I'm about to show you, I'll be using a power meter uh, plugged into the outlet. So just FYI, this was the setup I was currently running. Uh, it's a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4GB of RAM. Um, it boots from this um, SSD over USB. Uh, my media files were then stored on these two 3 terabyte drives that are connected together in this dock and then connected to the Raspberry Pi over USB 3.0. The Pi is then connected to um, through Ethernet to my local network and in this way it distributes the media. The Pi did a good job for uh, direct streaming but unfortunately it was too slow for transcoding and the ARM CPU did not support any type of hardware transcoding so I needed an upgrade. Okay, uh, enough talking, now we're gonna do some testing. I've got everything connected to the Odyssey here as you can see. I plugged in the power meter and now we can start the tests. So what I've done here is went to my laptop, served to the local IP of the Plex server that's running on the Odyssey board. So uh, then I logged into Plex and we've got our library here. So I've added a couple of films, these are all H.265 encoded. Um, 
this course video is 4K, so we're gonna test the 4K performance, 4K 10-bit HDR. Um, and then also I've added an episode of Game of Thrones that's H265 10-bit encoded. So if we will play them back in the browser, they will be transcoded to H264 since browsers cannot decode H265 streams. If you're wondering what's this one here, it's because the server that's running on the Raspberry Pi that I showed you earlier is currently out of date, but the server running on the Odyssey board is up to date with the latest Plex server. So as uh, we see currently nothing is being played, so the CPU is idle at around 2% usage and the GPU being the uh, Intel HD graphics also 2%. Then we're gonna start um, Toy Story 3. Uh, and we should see the CPU starting up. So we've got 32% and 78% GPU usage out of one stream. Okay, so we're gonna add another session. I'm gonna play that also in another video. So that started. Also buffered fairly quick. CPU usage is about 30-40%. The GPU 80%. Okay, so I'm starting another instance of Toy Story 3. Also loads fine. And starts playback after a couple of seconds. So no problems at all. Now I jumped uh, ahead and started 8 streams simultaneously. Um, no problems from the server side, but my laptop can't handle all this playback. So my, the server and not the server but my laptop as the bottleneck here. Here we see that in fact we got all these instances running and they're all hardware transcoded. Under this heavy load the CPU got quite uh, toasty and the sp uh, CPU fan spun up quite a bit. Uh, when we take a look at the power meter we see that at full load we still only consume about 25 watts of power, which is really good if you ask me. That's about the equivalent of one halogen lamp like this or an LED floodlight. As a last test, I'm going to attempt 4K transcoding on this board. Uh, it wasn't really necessary for me, but I thought why not give it a try, since the other uh, tests didn't bottleneck the server. So I'm starting Cars here, it's a 10-bit 4K movie. And after some loading... Yeah, it does in fact start, so no problem at all, it buffers perfect, no buffer issues, so this is 4K transcoding on a $180 computer, this is crazy, it plays perfectly normal, no, no hiccups and yeah. The buffer loads without a problem. So um, now we're gonna skip ahead and see how long it takes to load to a random point. And after a couple of seconds, yeah, it's back. Plays perfectly fine. This is crazy on such a cheap, okay, such a cheap CPU. They know we are now. They're gonna tell their friends. You'll see. Because Plex advises a Core i3, and this is a sealer. Yeah, works perfectly fine. So the conclusion, uh, the Odyssey is quite a good performer as a Plex server. It comes in at an attractive price point of $180 and is more than capable as a family Plex server. 
Starting playback and seeking in a movie do take some time to load, so you do notice that it isn't the most powerful thing, but it gets the job done. And the fact that even 4K playback is possible is just astonishing. Note that every fi video file is different, so performance may vary. So yeah, if you're searching for a capable and affordable Plex server that's capable of hardware transcoding, go for this board. Seed Studio also recently announced a case for this board, so your setup could look a bit better than mine just laying on my desk. So that concludes my experiences with the Odyssey Recomputer as a Plex Media server. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching. And of course, like and subscribe.